So you can see here this angel with her angel wings, and you can see here this devil, and then they're interlaced. Another one down here, another angel over here, all depending on how your brain receives this black and white image. So we move on. Now, when we see something, this can generate a number of different reactions from our brain and from our mind. There is what we call the fast track, which is based on our primitive brain. We see something, say a dog in this case, which has bitten us in the past. And what happens is this creates a very quick reaction to save us. The reaction that we call running or fighting, fight or flight. And it doesn't actually go through the cerebral cortex. There's no analysis done. We see something and we react. So any kind of traumatic experiences we may have had in the past may cause this kind of reaction in our brain and it just does not pass through our belief system. It does not, it doesn't, it just says this is danger and I react to it. The slow track which goes through our cerebral cortex, and our interpretation is that it goes through the brain, it's interpreted, and then a reaction is created. With analysis and various forms of energy psychology, which are listed here, and other forms of therapy, we can change our program perceptions and experience different emotions, and that will alter our chemical and neurological habits. Now, we're going to move on here to a perception. This is a perception uh, developed, quite developed in spiritual teachings, but also here um, based on some concepts by a biologist and a psychologist called Jung. Rupert Sheldrake, you may have read some of his books, uh, has created the theory of the morphogenetic field. It's, made of uh, two words, morphogenetic. Morpho means form, genetic means that which gives birth to form. These are Greek words. In which he says that we all have a common field, a common morphogenetic field, and we all input habits and knowledge and tendencies into that field and receive from that field, and thus from others, tendencies and habits and knowledge and skills, similar to the concept of the collective subconscious of Carl Jung, in which we have a collective subconscious, and we are affected by the contents of this, uh, this collective subconscious, subconscious of other persons. So we are connected and from which we are affected by common tendencies, thought forms, and emotions, as well as skills and knowledge. Thus, all of our new perceptions and reactions become more accessible to all others through that field. When we learn something, when we overcome a problem or develop a new way of thinking, of feeling, of reacting, this changes the field. And that new behavior, new way of thinking, becomes more accessible, easier for other people to to manifest. So in the center here we have the pure formless consciousness, the divine consciousness if you like, and this is passing through this morphogenetic field and there's a field for every kind of species and being. There's this field for the species and then the field for the individual. And as it passes through what we call here the causal body in spiritual teachings, that becomes an energy field, or the energy body, and then that manifests as that being, that specific being in the physical world. We could consider that this light here going through the film is actually divine consciousness, God consciousness, which then becomes all types of beings and even events and manifestations in the physical world. Now, a possible, uh, another example that may help us understand this morphogenetic field would be some of the experiments that have taken place through the transcendental meditation 
groups. Um, they gathered in, in number of cities throughout the world. One of them, Washington, D.C., where there's a very high crime rate. And they brought in 4,000 meditators who, in cooperation with the police, did a study. Now, these people just sat in rooms and did a certain kind of meditation. It was in the summer. In fact, this was also explained in the book and movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? Um, and the police, head of the police said, in order to get the results you people want, we'd have to have snow in the summer, in July, in Washington, D.C. That would be the only thing that would reduce the crime rate. But the Transcendental Meditation people had done this in 48 other cities, and they always found that the crime rate was reduced around 25%. And the same thing happened in Washington, D.C. So, And they were not visualizing peace. They were not visualizing that the crime rate would go down. They simply went into themselves and became aware of the deep peace within themselves. You could say that they came, became aware of that pure consciousness in the center of their being and not their thoughts. And it seems that it's in some way, maybe through the morphogenetic field, affected people. And there was, in fact, a 25% rate, uh, reduce, reduction of crime in Washington, D.C. in that summer. You can look all this up on the Internet, so it's well documented. Now, another experiment um, was done by a doctor, Japanese doctor Masaru Emoto, who did experiments uh, in causing water to crystallize and then taking pictures of the crystallized water. Um, and then he would emit certain emotions or blessings or ideas to the water to see if the crystalline structure of the water would change. And these are some amazing, this is in one of his book has, uh, he's gotten a book with hundreds of photographs. Here's water from a dam before a blessing. It looks pretty horrible actually. There's no symmetry. It's dark. Uh, and then after a blessing, uh, the water became this beautiful image on the right-hand side, showing that you know, human emotions and intentions will affect the state of the water. And so the next question is, if our emotions are affect and our intentions are affecting water so much and making it change it from something negative to positive or the opposite, something positive to negative, then what are our emotions doing to our bodies, which are 80% water? Now, the next image here, um, you can see that water is being affected by certain kinds of music. So on the left-hand side, we have water that has been affected by heavy metal music. Uh, and on the right-hand side, by a specific symphony, a, a modern symphony, which has been written. Uh, and you can see how that same water, which was showing the same crystalline structure before being exposed to the music, same, and then exposed to the music, and then how that crystalline structure changes. So you can see that water is being affected by our emotions, by our intentions, and by music and the vibrations in our environment. Now, the following image is two images of water that have been affected by um, specific wishes or messages. The left-hand side, we see the message which says, thank you. Um, and then on the right-hand side, hello. So we can see how our positive emotions and intentions can really change the structure of the water and then hopefully change the structure of our own bodies, of life, of the events happening in our lives, that our emotions and intentions have an effect on the world around us. And this is very important 
for learning how to change our reality. Now, in this next image, we have, um, we're showing you uh, experiments by the Dr. Larry Dossi, who played cells from the same culture into two beakers. And then he played, paced the same amount of poison in each to see how many cells would die in each beaker. First, he prayed for the cells in one beaker and then not for the cells in the other beaker. And there was a 20% difference in the, in the survival of these cells. More cells survived, 20% more survived in the beaker for which he prayed than in the beaker for which he did not pray. And then he did visualization. I'm not sure exactly what he visualized, but I imagine light or the cells being well. And he got the same result. 20% higher survival for the ones he visualized for and then for the ones he did not visualize. And then he did both. He prayed and visualized and surprisingly found a 40% difference in the survival of these cells. So this is an experiment which just makes it just so clear that our thoughts and our intentions have a direct effect on cells. And that could mean other people and that could mean ourselves, that could mean plants and animals, that our prayers, our visualizations, our sending light has a direct effect on the world around us. And we could even imagine on situations such as the economy, or people who are ill, or conflicts, war, whatever they may be around us. By praying and visualizing positive realities, or light in each situation, we can have a positive effect. Now we're going to move on to some results that were found by the Heart Math Institute in California, where they measured the effect of emotions on the heart rate, the heart rate variability. And we see that when there is frustration or anger, the movement of the heart, the heart rate, is quite chaotic. And when we are feeling love or gratitude, we can see this rhythmic, harmonious uh, effect on actually the heart. And you can learn more about the Heart Math Institute at www.heartmath.org. Now, this led to further understanding. That is, they found out that five minutes of love, of experiencing love or gratitude, will boost our immune system for five hours. And also, we are able to experience more positive perceptions and our thoughts and creativity are increased. And that when we have anger or frustration, and that would probably include their fear or guilt, then that weakens our immune responses for five hours. So here we can see on the right-hand side, sincere appreciation or love, and on the left, the frustration or anger. And it was found that the heart actually has a stronger electromagnetic field than the brain, and that the functioning of the heart deeply affects the functioning of the brain and thus the mind. Um, and that there are ways to use the, the 